Welcome to Roleplay Roulette. Where we take the bullets for you. Welcome to Roleplay Roulette, where we take the bullets for you. Holy crap, you guys, it's a sanguine game that isn't about furries. Ah, sanguine. We've talked about you before in our less than stellar review of Iron Claw Squaring the Circle. Hell, by now we might have already done our retrospective on that review and maybe even an old play on the revised edition of the game. My love affair with this company is no secret, and my bookshelf shows it off proudly. However, there is one theme in the company's games that have always made them a hard sell amongst my friends. And that is the furries. I've always said that Sanguine should do a game that isn't based on furries, so that their brilliant game design could actually reach a broader audience. Well, they've done a few now, so let's take a look at their first foray out of nichedom with their enormous gonzo space epic, Murad Song. As we said before, Sanguine flirted with an on-anthro game called Noggle Stones, but it wasn't as well received as hoped and didn't step outside the realm of niche. Likewise, their game Bleeding Edge is as non-furry as one can get, boasting only humans and care gen. However, it doesn't use Sanguine's greatest selling point, the Cardinal Game Engine. Mirad Song, however, is an etude, embellishing and improving. It shows that the system can accommodate whole symphonies of settings and themes. Speaking of settings, Mirad Song is a vast one. It is set in a galactic community totally alien to our own. It takes place in the shadow of a galactic empire ruled by a mysterious race called the Syndics that recently vanished. Their subordinates, called the Remnants, still insist they receive Encore, but the Coda is on the horizon. More are defying an order that amounts to a heaven without a god, an orchestra without a conductor. Characters are made from a list of alien creatures known as Legacies, which are refreshingly polyphonic. You'll enjoy an even greater level of bizarre medley if you pick up the supplement Mirad Aliens. Character creation is very similar to Iron Claw. Traits are spread the same, legacy takes the place of species, and career remains relatively unchanged. However, there is a new quality called upbringing, giving the character a little more depth and a couple of extra tricks. Skills are obtained the same, however, equipment is mowed unto itself. Our format is a little too constrained to note it here. What's that you say? You like your sci-fi to have a healthy dose of fantasy? Well, don't despair, Luke Skywalker, because this game has that covered also. You see the Syndics, the Vanished Masters we mentioned before? They recognize the harmonies of the universe and its natural laws were like a great composition, and one that could be taken part of if you knew the right chords. Enter Zen Harmonics, psychic powers possessed by those with a special connection to the song, usually through a near-mystical technology. So basically, if you're more into wars than Trek, Marad Song can accommodate your space wizards. The song is not just a pretty name. It's a very important element of the setting itself and returns in referential leitmotif throughout the core book. It is a metaphor for the natural laws of the universe, for the chorus of millions of disparate species that have little in common save their history with the Syndics. It is the order the Syndics brought to the universe, as they literally directed the genetic futures of entire species so much that they effectively vanished. There's a lot of this in the libretto, excuse me, the core book, and it makes sense. As anyone who has studied music theory or any shoegazing hipster band can tell you, the foundation of music is math. There's also a second theme running throughout the composition that might be a little less obvious if you aren't familiar with the source material. In this case, it's the Arden presentation. Now, we've had a regrettable history with discussing the Arden Sanguine games in the past. I'm not sure we'll ever stop apologizing for our original review of Iron Claw. But this is a different emphasis altogether. Murad's song is extremely stylized and carefully designed to reflect a specific era of visual storytelling, indie comics from the 70s and 80s. Don't believe me? I don't blame you. If you haven't been into it, then it can be easily overlooked. But let's look into the incredibly stylized presentation of this game. First of all, look at the art. A bit cartoony, but intensely intricate and detailed. The colors are vibrant, but secondary. Oranges, purples, greens, and ochre yellows. Here, let me show you some pictures. Look at these frames. This could have been pulled straight from Metal Hurlant or Pilot. Here in the States, it would fit right in in Heavy Metal Magazine, complete with ironic tongue-in-cheek ending. Here's another. This may not trigger your memories, but to me, this could be a page right out of Albedo. Look at that, right there. Look at that Mobius ass looking mother Seriously, right out of Arzak, the Inkal, or Dune. I don't know if that does anything for you, but the art nerd in me is rock hard. As games go, it's extremely on style and never deviates from this for an instant. 
The color schemes evoke the independent artists who use them to defy the primary color tradition of mainstream comics. The careful, intricate designs show influence from the Art Nouveau tradition. There are nods to the look and feel of the pop art influenced cerebral sci-fi movement. It is a work that very carefully balances style and substance, and is able to do this thanks to a stable foundation perfected in previous games. So last year, I took a creature design class, which, one, the fact that my major offers it is amazing, and two, was a really, really fun class. I got to really stretch my creativity, and I made this whole world with different species that I covered in my papers. And one of them was a race of psychic crystal creatures who grew crystals and shed them asexually to create more of their race. I had never read Murad's song before this, I didn't even have the book then, and look at that! They're right there! Right there! Uh, <laughs> You're so butthurt. I'm still salty <laughs> about still it! still so salty. <laughs> it's fair to say that Mirad's song, now that's the supplement, yeah. Mir Mirad Mir Aliens. Myriad Aliens. Okay. Or Mirad, I don't know how it's pronounced. Yeah, we've been saying, I, I think I, we've been saying Mirad. Mirad. It may be Myriad, or I don't know. I've pronounced that word Myriad since I was small, but... I've never heard it said aloud, I so think I it could be wrong. Is myriad, but it's regardless. a weird, uh, you know what? F it. Who cares? <laughs> <laughs> it's fair to say that Myriad Song goes just into the right into the deep end on weird aliens. Yeah. Yeah. Um, the, uh, the supplement more so. Right. But they're, even the ones in the core book are, sheets falling all have out. some imagination to them. Yeah. These guys are just shark heads in jars. But if you look at the core book, like they're, they're even the races like immediately set off my furry meter. Offender. I'm about to say something nice. Okay. The primary offender. The primary offender of this is the Towser. Yeah. Which I look, you open the page and they're pastel dog people. They're so cute. And I, I immediately groaned and then I read them. And I'm like, oh, they're a sil silicon based, not quite air breathing. Yeah. Uh, dog people with poisonous blood and they're, all this, and so they're di they're they're more than they dug deeper than just this is a dog person yeah. that ev er, that evolved on Sirius. Exactly. This one's a geode with tentacles in it instead of crystals. And these are playable yeah. characters. So I'm I, I'm I'm kind of giving it's it it sounds like a backhanded compliment, but it right. is actually just a but compliment. It's, yeah, and they they set it up um, to make sense. Their blood is poisonous. But they've also got like a go-to in any sci-fi game. I want to be able to play a robot. You can, and they totally have that. Um, yeah, weird something spider about me. people who aren't oh, evil. Oh, I love the spiders. Spider They're people so that aren't cool. evil. Yeah, species yeah, design about. matters. It really yes. does. <laughs> is what it comes down and to. They did a great and Marad Song's this. got some amazing species design. They do. Uh, they do. It's great, and I love '70s sci-fi comics. I love Albedo. I love Mobius. What did comes down to i want to say this is a good game i would say so i would this say it is, is a good game this is a real i i would it's a game go we out, can recommend really for me game. i say think this is a really good game i mean i love the cardinal system so of course i'm gonna say it's a really good game <laughs> it's a great system um they did a really good job porting cardinal into sci-fi which is something not a lot of games can boast I want to point out this game proves that the cardinal system can handle more than fantasy. It, 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 what, st what surprised me, actually, is that you can sit and get some of the most advanced equipment in the game right from the outset. That's your plus five Vorpal sword at the end of the campaign, <laughs> mm. is you get a Mark 17 Neutrino Blaster <laughs> with all the, all the add-ons. Plus five Vorpal. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, but they give you, it's less about the gear and more about what you know how to do with it because there's a whole host of gifts in there that in just increase your ability to use certain kinds of equipment. It's very, and very cardinally. It's, it's this like interlocking system that gives you, I, I feel like gives you some, some depth without adding a huge amount of complication to it. Which, so it's, I applaud that. Yeah. Uh, this game right now on drive through RPG at the time of this recording, it's $45 for the hardback and the PDF combo. Worth hmm. it. This is a really good game, and it deserves to be on your shelf. It deserves, it deserves a shot. It deserves to be played. It deserves a shot. Um, I absolutely wholeheartedly recommend this without reservation. I do, too. I think this is a solid... This is this may be one of the best games we've ever reviewed. But it's a good sci-fi game, which they're, they're, not, they're not as common as you'd think. But I can count them on one hand, the number of sci-fi systems I think are really contenders for being amazingly good. Um, I think Myriad Song has a place on that list. 
So how do you feel about sci-fi games? Are there some that you really like that uh, maybe we haven't talked about or maybe we haven't even seen? If you think so, go ahead and tell us about them in the comments. We'd love to hear from you about that. If you've played this song, this song, if you've played this song, this game, uh, tell us about it. You know, tell, uh, tell other people about it. Uh, please leave us a like please. and a subscribe. We hope to have a review out every month and have our production schedule back on proper things. Also, big deal, and you may notice there's no skits in this video, the production schedule of using those is untenable um, for us because of work and school and limited resources and we can't pay, we have no funds, we can't pay our actors, etc., etc. Um, we are experimenting with trying to make the reviews themselves funnier. Please tell us what you think about it in the comments. Uh, we do want to hear from people and uh, we'll, we'll base our decisions going forward off that. Once again, please leave us a like and a subscribe if you enjoyed this. Um, feel free to check out this game on DriveThruRPG. And keep watching for more stuff from Roleplay Roulette and Seven Realms Productions. We'll see you guys next time.